The mag, I put you in a bag like a poodle, like a poodle. You fuck ugly bitches usual, fubu. Trying to go from dope dealer, dope dealer. I'm trying to go from dope dealer to coach Schiller. Hey guys, what's going on? This is the Eric Barber here. I'm with my man Bruiser Wolf from the Bruiser Brigade. You had quite a busy last couple of days. Uh, you know, Danny Brown, Blockhead, off the radar, new signing man interview. How we doing today, man? Oh man, bless, bless, man. That's all I can say right now, man. Just so blessed and thankful for the opportunities, you know. I'm just making the best out of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, sure, dude. And uh, so we're actually in the Bruiser house right now, um, you know, with a couple, couple of the Bruiser guys over here right now. Um, how did you end up joining the Bruiser Brigade? Oh, man. Um, doing showcases, long story short, I ran into Fat Ray. And um, that's my partner, my birthday twin and shit. He uh, brought me into the Bruiser. We recorded um, fucking Old Faithful. It's been up since then, you know what I'm saying? Brought me out to the Bruiser uh, Thanksgiving one year. Performed it and shit, it's been rocking since. Got Bruiser Wolf now and shit. <laughs> That's sweet. And, uh, you know, I have seen that, like, in a lot of your earlier works, um, you know, Fat Ray's been there before pretty much anyone else. How long have you known him? Uh, I've been known Ray for, like, six years. Seriously? But just, you know, mutual respect for a while, you know what I'm saying? Been knowing of him, knowing of his work for a while. Yeah, sure. And, you know, you mentioned that you're now Bruiser Wolf. I understand, you know, you were a big wolf before. Where'd that uh, name come from for you? Um, just uh, really, man, when I got here and shit, and they just open arms, accept me in, and it's just Bruiser Brigade. I'm learning about the Bruiser Brigade and shit. And uh, when you look at it, you, you, I'm coming coming in, I'm Big Wolf, you know what I'm saying? So the biggest wolf in the pack usually be the Bruiser Wolf, you know what I'm saying? So it just really came off writing a, rap, uh, writing a song. That we never really put out. It's called um, I'm Bruiser Wolf. You know what I'm saying? That's what it, and I just ran with it. You know what I'm saying? Bruiser Wolf and just show my love for the squad. You know what I'm saying? Could we still see that song come out or is that like vaulted now? It's up to Rafi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes it's up to him, man. I hear you. For sure. And, you know, I'm, I, uh, Checked out, you know, Dope Game Stupid and all that. And, you know, one thing that I really liked about it was that um, you could tell that, like, the whole Bruiser kind of put their own, like, spin on it, right? Like, Z did the cover. Um, Rafi produced a bunch of tracks. You got a bunch of them on it. Um, what was that process like for you to make that album? Uh, honestly, it was like, that was the first time I ever seen something. I was learning right then under the uh, toolage of Danny and them and high bruiser, you know, operator, whatever, you know, um, I knew nothing about artwork and how the artwork came together. Uh, how Danny and Raffi and them was peak, picking the beat, beat plant placements and stuff like that. Uh, I didn't like the beats. I was, you know, I was like, come in with that hard trap music shit. Detroit sound like, you know, and to rap over this type of beat and just brought my artistry out. You know what I'm saying? But him, how he picked the songs, Danny picked the songs, and um, it was just new to me. Like, I learned from that, and just how the artwork worked with everything. You know, it was, it was really different, and um, by me being a student this time, I was able to learn and keep going back, and this time, when I come back this time, had my spin on it, too, you know? For sure. And, you know, I know Dope Game Stupid was your first, it's like your studio release debut album. How did you really start with uh, rapping? Just generally rapping, shit, I've been rapping since six years old. Uh, my older brother, my cousins and shit, on the porch rapping. They was in a group or whatever. Uh, I just always loved, that was my music I chose, uh, rapping. You know, even though my father played R&B, old school shit, stylistics, Blue Magic, Whispers. I just always loved uh, hip hop, but really just like got good to, good at it and Started looking at it like a sport, maybe, you know, yeah. maybe like really like seven to eight years ago, like, you know, but that was my first time really doing an album and the way they did it and just all about working hard and coming in this bitch every day and recording. You know what I'm saying? That's the key. Sure. And when you're talking about, you know, making a sport, are you really looking at it from like the team aspect or the competitive aspect or a little bit of both? 
Yeah, uh, a little bit of both. Like I use, uh, like I play football. You know what I'm saying? And um, I always look at it. I look at it like uh, in so many different ways. Like if it, from a team perspective, you got to understand who your teammates is. You know what I'm saying? You got to know what their strengths is, their weaknesses, and how to help them. Um, from a personal perspective, you got to carry yourself right. You can't uh, say any fucking thing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's like I look at I use football to, to help me with a lot of stuff that I choose. Like I'll study film like football players watch film. I watch film on a great artist like I watch fucking Teddy Pendergrass sometimes. And shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, I just study film, study great artists. You know what I'm saying? And just stay humble. Like and that's how you, you know, that's how the football and the sports shit help me. You know what I'm saying? That's good, man. Love the transferable skills and, you know, where that's applicable. Love it. And you know, you know, sports, you're always competitive. So it's good competition. It's bullshit competition, too. Like you, you have people just hating on you. They want to compete. And then you compete with somebody just to be on a track and rap with them because you appreciate their style. Like that type of good, comp, you know, competition. You know what I'm saying? So that's the sport of it, too. You know? For sure. And, you know, I know kind of Fat Ray kind of pulled you into the Bruiser Brigade, but obviously, you know, you have a great relationship with someone like Danny Brown. Um, you know, how did that relationship sort of develop um, between the two of you? Oh, shit, man. Danny just a, just a real one, you know what I'm saying? So real niggas link up, it only going to work out, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm not a uh, – I understand my role, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm loyal. And he the same way, even being, a, you know, the – the head honcho, he didn't understand his role, you know what I'm saying? So he just, man, genuine person, you know? Like, he, you ain't gonna let a nigga fail, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, nice. you know uh, just a blessing to have him, you know? He just real, man. He just, he, what you see is what you get, you know what I mean? And uh, that's why I love him, you know? For Fuck sure. him. And, you know, we just heard you on uh, YBP, right? And that, in my opinion, was one of the hottest tracks on that album, which already is a really hot, you know, album, all all things, you know, put together. Um, how did that, um, you know, did he approach you for that? Did he have, like, the beat with you in mind? Man. I'm going to tell you exactly how I have it. Um, I was so excited to be a part of this bruiser shit. I was coming here every fucking day. I had finally got my key to the house and shit. And uh, nice. I was coming in to work and shit. And I came in. I think BMO and them, they was doing some shit, cleaning up the house. And Brown seen me like, come on, nigga, go upstairs. We going upstairs. Like, I was ready to go up anyway. Yeah. I got a song for you. And then he watched me. I did the song and I did it, right? And he was like, yeah, it's cool, but that. It's one of the first things he taught me, too, about, you know, flowing. Like, because I be unorthodox a lot, you know, so I try to make words fit and shit. Yeah. Like, well, that shit got to be butter. Like, and he like, butter. So uh, I went home and, you know, took some words out, made it yeah. right, and just, sure. that's what really made this song strong, too, where I can just stay on a thesis, Detroit City, being young, black, and poor, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but that's how that shit went. I do, you know, that makes sense with that butter comment, because that's actually something that I felt like, you know, given all the other songs I heard about from you, like that, just your verse in general was like a little bit more faster paced. And I felt like all the words just kind of like fit in like a little bit tighter. But, you know, speaking of your, you know, uh, unique style, right? Like, um, how did you develop that as an artist? Um, Really like, um, I just like, I used to do uh, this Friday Night Cypher at 107.5 and like, I know it was Cypher coming every Friday, so I had to have some bars together. So I just write some shit, you know what I'm saying? Maybe 24 to 30 bars or how many I can come up with. But the th the key thing was when we got there, we didn't know what beat we was going to hear. So sure. you get the beat. Uh, I'm like, damn, this the you only get to choose five beats. So I'm like, damn, all of these bitches whack this week. I got to roll with one. So I jump on one I'm not familiar with. And all the words that I prepared, it just just cram in, you know what I'm saying? And it sound like I'm running on and uh and I just like watching film on that shit, I just start and just develop, you know what I'm saying? I start using words more. So when you're using words more, you, you care about the beat, sure. but you're really trying to get off, you know what I'm saying? And that's what I was doing. Man, that's how that's, that came about. That's awesome, man. And you know, one other unique characteristic about your rapping is like uh 
the you know your rap voice right it's so iconic where like some people would be like i think i've heard you know bruiser wolf on this i think i heard him on this and i'm like does he rap like this and they're like oh that's him you know what i'm saying like what what kind of artistic choice was that for you um i don't know i it, it, it's like a compliment sometimes like but I be feeling, cause like I'm really, it's a sport. I really love this shit. Sure. And people say, you sound like E40. I'm, I'm like, damn, like that ain't my attentions. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, and some people are like, nah, I can just remind me of E40. You know, it's really a great compliment at the end of the day. But I'm like, man, 40 the motherfucking great. Like, come on, like, you know what I'm saying? I don't, yeah. I'm happy to be in there or, or sugar free. And then I see, I wonder when, when they was coming out, did somebody say, 40 remind me of Sugar Free or Sugar Free remind me of 40. You know what I'm saying? Before there ever was a fucking Bruiser Wolf. But uh, it's really an honor. You know what I'm saying? It's just a it's a, a blessing to even be uh, uh, mentioned in, the, in, them, in them, them two guys thing. But, um, you know, me and my falsetto voice, you know what I'm saying? I Honestly, it come from the, the people that make fucking timeless shit like um, Stylistics, Blue Magic, uh, Philip Bailey, uh, the, the tenors, you know what I'm saying? And everybody was just, you know, and people be so serious too rapping. You know, some of this shit is funny to me. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's funny that the way we act about this shit was real, was not, you know? So, uh, you know, it comes across funny sometimes, but really, you know, I'm, I'm being a wise guy, you know, like I'm just kicking and talking about shit. But, you know, it's the falsetto voice. I get it, you know, and I'm trying to get my words off. So, you know, I don't know how they get it and judge it or whatever. Like, you know, when, when, um, LeBron came in the league, they compared him to Magic or, sure. or they're still today. The Who's better, Jordan or Kobe? You know, it's just always Jordan play, Kobe play like Jordan. You know, it's just, hey man, I guess we from the culture and, and that's what y'all see or whatever, but that's just the way it come off. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? It's just, it's, that's my art. You know what I'm saying? No doubt about it, man. No doubt. And, you know, one of your other big releases from uh, yesterday was uh, your work with uh, Blockhead, right? Um, and he's he's kind of on the come up, too. You got two verses on uh, that project. And, you know, great stuff, man. Um, what was that like working with uh, someone, you know, on his way up? You know, I got I got this thing. I don't be knowing who the fuck people be sometimes. Like, when I met, I met some big people, man. Like, I met... Um, the very first time I met Paul Rosenberg, I didn't even know him. I'm like, I'm like, hey, how you doing? You know, like, and it just went over my head. And when he left, I'm like, damn, that was Paul, that was Paul Rosenberg. What the fuck? You know what I'm saying? But uh, just a lot of people I meet, I don't. So when Block hit me up, you know, uh, I just know he's a good, genuine guy. And um, he was straight about business. He wasn't about no bullshit. And um, he sent me some tracks and we did some shit. We was supposed to been work. Then he spent the block and he really wanted to work with me and he gave me the the project uh to do. He sent me a few songs and I already uh loved uh, Billy Woods and Lucid, you know, sure. Arm and Hammer and them they're my people, so it was a given to do, you know, to work with them, you know. Yeah. Nice, that's great. And you know, that's kinda of funny too. Actually, you know, one of my boys, he uh he was at one of the Dilla events and uh he uh, sees this dude in like a Gundam hoodie and starts talking to him for like an hour. I'm like, my guy, you're just talking to Fat Ray, and he was like, he was like, oh really? Like he had no idea. It was just for the it'd Gundam be, stuff. It'd be better that way because you'd be just genuine and regular. Not to say I'd be different if I knew who who they were or whatever, but I can deal with them off that first experience so much better. You know what I'm saying? That first impression, you know, you know, you just feel that realness and shit, but. If I met somebody that I did know, I'd be the same way. But you know what I'm saying? But it'd be a lot of bit more acknowledgement. You know what I'm saying? I'd be regretting that. Like, damn, I didn't acknowledge him enough. Yeah. That's why I felt with Block. Like, I didn't know how big Block was. Like, Block, that was big for me, with that, sure. them features. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And uh, he about business, and they, they pushing it. You know what I'm saying? And uh, he got he sharing his fan base with me, and I'm forever grateful for that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whenever you need me, I'm on deck. I'm on, I'm on deck, Block. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, something else that's super huge. Also yesterday, dude, Sony, bro. You got that Sony deal signed and everything, man. Uh, man, um, that's Sony Orchard. You know, I uh, got it through Fake Short Drive. My man, Andrew Barber, you know what I'm saying? Put it together. That's my manager now, my partner, you know what I'm saying? And, um, you know, it's a distribution deal. It's going to help me reach the masses, you know what I'm saying? And, um, 
you know, me and my family and, and the crew benefit from it well. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, something that people kind of ask, because, you know, you sometimes see it with deals is like, does this have any bearing on your uh, creative process or, you know, the timeliness of your releases, anything like that? Oh, no, I'm not. Not never jumping in no shit that was going to control my creativity. You know what I'm saying? I made sure before I even did this shit, I called Danny first, you know, and I, you know what I mean? And uh, he was like, man, you better take that shit. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I never get in the situation, you know, too old for that shit to be playing around, you know. I ain't taking no petty money or none of that shit. And I'm, I'm going to make that off merch. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, I just want my. My music to be timeless and respected. I want to own all my shit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I just want to deal with business like that and try to make my way. You know what I'm saying? And my lane through that way. You know, I ain't, I never do nothing that'll stop my creative uh, process because that's all the fuck I got. You know what I'm saying? Awesome. Right. Dude, and speaking of business, man, I mean, I'm seeing you kind of pop up a little bit more on socials. I'm seeing you kind of ride a uh, X Twitter. Instagram, TikTok, is that all part of your new kind of way of reaching the masses a little bit more? Or Danny tell you to, or you know, what happened there? No, I just things are starting to blow up, and then I do have a, a machine, man. I got um, Andrew Barber, Fake Sure Drive. You know, um, they stepping in and, and helping me out and get everything, you know, more structured and organized. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's 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 uh, what you're seeing. You know, what I'm saying that's the difference too. You know? Yeah. Yeah. No doubt about it, man. And also another big platform that I just saw you on yesterday, dude, off the radar. Like, they've been blowing up. They did that. Uh, I feel like everyone saw that Drake Central C thing they did. I know Z was just on it. What was that like, and how did that happen? Um, Actually, at first, uh, Z was coming home. You know, Z be uh, traveling like a motherfucker. And he came home, and he was uh, like, bro. Fuck it, you, I'm going to do the uh, on the radar shit again. You want to go? I'm like, hell yeah, I want to go, right? But then um, Z left. He had just did a show, uh, you know, out of town or whatever um, with Earl Sweatshirt and everybody. So he was busy. I didn't know. You know, we be so busy. We ain't talking like that, you know. Yeah. So I had, you know, Andrew call him, and then we lined it up. Z wound up going the day before me. He came back and turned like, no, nah, I'm going now. You ain't going. I'm like, no. Nah. I'm like, damn, I already set it up. But, uh that's how I initially Z put my name in, and then Andrew followed up, and then we got there, and uh, man, it was great. You know what I'm saying? I, I had, I just played my body. You know, that's where I come from. I come from the Friday Night Cipher. I, you know, I didn't want to do none of my motherfucking unreleased music. I just did a nice freestyle for the city. You know what I'm saying? Sure. There's another thing where they don't show you the beat or anything like that, or oh, do no, they? they... Um, you could choose your beat, or they have a beat for you. Yeah, but you, I think most of them send in any unreleased music. Yeah. yeah, dude, that's really cool. And uh, you know, I understand that you're also putting together your own album right now. Um, I'm not sure how much you can say about it. Uh, hopefully, at least a little bit. Uh, yeah, uh, I want to talk about it. Uh, we got um, my stories got stories dropping. I don't want to tell you if it's this year or the next or the beginning, yeah. but uh, it's coming and it, it might be here at the end of the year. Uh, I got uh, Fake Shore Drive, Sony Orchard behind me on that one. Uh, Bruiser Brigade, you know what I'm saying? I got Raffi with me. I got a couple more dope producers with me. I got some dope features on there. You know, um, it's really, it's really like people going to try to compare it to Dope Games too, but for real though, you need to just go listen to Dope Game Stupid. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then come back, listen to my stories, got stories. Uh, it's the same. You know, it's fun. It's a little different. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I can't. I really don't want to say too much, but it's coming. You know, it's done. You know, uh, everything is mixed and mastered. Uh, you know, videos. You know, we just doing the timing thing right now, and uh, it's coming, y'all. It's gonna be a treat for sure. Nice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I just thought of this as well, dude, but, like, with Dope Game, you know, I mean, that album is, like, it kind of got a little bit prolific. Like, you you see it on Reddit, like, Hip Hop Heads, Hip Hop 101, all that stuff. And that's, that's like, really impressive for, like, a debut album. A lot of those songs are hitting close to a million views. What do you think was that secret sauce that got you that kind of instant commercial um, validation or success. 
shit, Danny Brown, shit, Danny Brown, uh, Bruiser Brigade. Uh, you know, if he put his name on a, you know, they know he is, he, he don't say some shit, you know, that's it. You know, uh, that helped me a fucking lot, you know, uh, shit, man, that, that, and just the family that, that we got, it was, it was going to make it. It was going, you know, he high, everybody was waiting on fucking Danny to drop at that time. And he pushing my shit like it's, it's his, he got a feature on it. Then we do TV 62, you know, the rollouts after that helped dope game stupid too. Um, uh, you know, all of that, the Fat Ray uh, release, J-U-S, yep. TV-62, uh, the beat tape from Raffi, all of that shit really pushed it. And now we got this thing where we got, um, it's called Mystique, you know what I'm saying? you aging, but it's getting better. Because you really didn't hear it. It came out in the pandemic. I can do festivals and shit. I couldn't do shit, you know what I'm saying? But people just looked into it, and it's getting better. And then shit like, with the feature now from Danny, you go, they going back to the catalog like, shit, this, this guy's dope. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. everything is a reason for it. You know what I'm saying? From the universe, I guess. But it's sitting, it's three years old. What was it? Two and a half years old. Uh, and people just get into it. And it's, yeah. it's dope. You know for what sure. I'm saying? So for sure. that's, that's, the, that's the special sauce, I believe. Uh, the mystique and we don't rush and we don't give a fuck what you think. You know what I'm saying? We gonna make make our music. You know what I'm saying? And that's something that I love about, you know, the Bruiser Brigade because, like, you know, for instance, if Danny Brown, he's pushing his new album. He drops his new album, bro. I know five minutes later after the release, dude, I know you're po- posting on your story. Rafi's got on his story. Um, Ray's got it on his story. Every single one's got it together. You guys got kind of got that cohesion. Like, it's that all dogs got to eat, you know, yeah, mentality. Yeah, for real, but. Honestly, we used to have group chats and shit to prepare for that type of oh, shit, really? but we all a team, so we it's, it's a feel now. So you know, they we've been we, we never knew Brown never told us when he was driving. We never knew we just been waiting on this shit for like it was ready, it's ready for three years. Like so, you know, uh, when it dropped, man, it was it's a big thing for us, man. It's, we we was a part of. He did it during the pandemic. He was here, you know. Uh, so we kind of got a formula where we all support each other. You know what I'm saying? We know when who's dropping and, you know, we could be a little bit better. But, uh, you know, it's all love and family. It's just a natural thing now. You know, we know when 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 Jay dropped, J-U-S dropped, we all posting and, and, and supporting and moving it. And there for videos, if we can be a uh, Fat Ray, same thing. We, we know it's big. You know what I'm saying? We a part of it. So we're going to post it like it's ours, too. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and celebrate it like it's ours. No doubt about it, man. That's that's great. That's something that I really always admired, man, for sure. Yeah, man. And, I, you know, I was looking at some of your Instagram stuff, and, you know, I know your uh, father's always been really impactful for your whole life. And, you know, I'm really – I first want to extend my condolences, you know, to his passing for, um, you know, earlier this year. Um, is there anything you want to talk about given his uh, impact on your life? Oh man, man, my father was a who one of a can. He um if you heard my uh, my first album, you know my relationship with my mom or my mom wasn't in her life like that. So he took care of me and my brother since we was one and two through everything. Potty train, fucking yeah. chicken pox, fucking measles, uh you know, everything, even to when you was grown, my father was there. Um he was a great man, it's unheard of. And he taught me so much. He taught me uh, how to, man, shit, read, write. Uh, he used to have me, uh, I always talk about his impact because he, you know, a father can impact your life in so, so many ways. But as far as my music, man, he used to make me read Langston Hughes. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he used to raise me off a certain, like it's a, it's a damn poem by Langston Hughes that just stuck in my head like my social security card. Uh, it's called My Model. My Model is to play a cool dig some jive because that's the reason I stay alive. My Model is, as I live and learn, is to be dug in return. You know what I'm saying? To, be, to dig and be dug in return. Uh, that's Langston Hughes. In so many ways, growing up as a black guy in the inner city, you know, uh, he used to say that shit to me all the time because people can throw you off your square. You can go to jail. You can kill somebody. You can snap. You you know, it's mind over matter. You know, um, that's what stick with me a lot. And, you know, 
him having me, we used to read, he used to make me read funny pages and sport pages out loud when we get the newspaper at the house. Uh, we listened to the stylistics. Shit, we used to get whoopings on Sunday night if we was up too long. Yeah. <laughs> Listen to the whispers and shit. Uh, stylistics, Blue Magic, Tina Marie, Rick James, just, you know, his music, you know, he, he just he just impacted it a lot and he didn't know it. And he really didn't give a shit about me rapping. He wanted me to, you know, take care of my family, you know, be educated, you know, and be able to provide, you know what I'm saying, and be a man. That's what he, he didn't care about rapping and shit like that. But he knew I was good at it. You know, he fucked with it. And man, I miss my father so much, man. He's yeah. such a just such a good father, man. Sometimes I still be Thinking I can pick up and call him sometimes. Man, yeah. Shit crazy, but rest in peace to my pop. Man. Miss him like a mug. Rest in peace, man. I really appreciate that, uh, those insights, man. Yeah. Definitely, no doubt about it. And, uh, you know, Bruiser, you know, you mentioned that you got the album coming uh, our way soon. Do you got any kind of uh, anything else you got going on? Any features? Anything else you got going on? Or maybe even outside of music? I don't know, with yeah. Sony or anything? I'm working right now, um, right now with Harry Fraud, um, you know, me and Rafi, we, we, uh, working on our shit. We always got something in the vault, yeah. you know, um, it's a possible possibility that we forming, uh, some Bruiser Brigade, uh, album, uh, we trying to put that together, uh, nice. but features, uh, shit, man, I got some features. I got feature with Trinidad James, uh, you know, I got quite a few of them. I don't want to say them because yeah. they're such a surprise. Uh, but, um, man, this next one, man, is so, I did it so I was, I was fucked up. I'm going to keep it funky for y'all. When I did My Stories Got Stories, it was like, think, just think, okay, I made Dope Game Stupid, right? And I'm like, damn, it's about to take off this is time. Yeah. Like, I thought the money was calling, but it was pocket dialing, for real. And um, Just imagine, your family or we all waiting on it. Like it's about to change or, yeah. you know, and yeah. still living that Cinderella life of music. And that's what I'm going to tell rappers too. You got to go get this shit. Ain't nobody about to come get your ass off the couch. Ain't nobody. That shit ain't no Cinderella story. You just got to have faith. And you got to keep working. But I was fucked up. You know, uh, my living situation was crazy. I had to make sure my, my family was straight. And I came and lived and moved in at the Bruiser house. And I cut a record every day. Just, you know, it's like, it's damn near like Carlito's the way. Um, you know, in Carlito's the way, he did the movie and it came out and then he did the, the sequel. And, and it was about before that. You know what I'm saying? And that's like, this kind of like before Dope Game Stupid or why is Dope Game Stupid the way it is? It's because yeah. my story got stories. You know what I'm saying? And uh, it's really unique. It's fun. It's. Uh, you going people. I, the people gonna say it's better. Well, you know what I'm yeah. saying. I don't want to throw that out there yet because awesome. I made them like when you making albums, it's like a baby. You know what I'm saying. You don't know what that motherfucker gonna be making it. You don't know what it's gonna look like when it come out. All of that. Yeah. You know. You just know you made it with love. You know what I'm saying. And and both of them albums, my baby. So I just hope people enjoy it. They're gonna enjoy it. You know what I'm saying. No doubt. No it's gonna doubt. be fire. Fuck with me. You know what I'm saying. Oh yeah. And Bruiser, I think we're getting close to wrapping up the whole interview, man. If you got any kind of message, positive message, or anything that you know you feel like you want to just put out there, um, now's your chance. Oh man, um, y'all stop hating. <laughs> y'all stop hating and uh, respect each other, man. And y'all doing this rap shit and this music, man. Keep keep it going. Don't give up. I don't care what the fuck you think. Just keep it going, man, and stay one hundred. Be genuine. Don't let these fuck niggas treat you off, trick you off the streets, man. But much love, man. Don't let them, man. All right. Well, hey, man. Pleasure was all mine for the interview, dude. Really appreciate it. Best of luck on all your upcoming stuff. All the socials will be down in the description below. And uh, peace out, everybody.